Hello and welcome to our third series in Fractions. I'm Mrs Bunce and I will be your teacher for today. You are going to need something to write on, so a piece of paper, pen, pencil or anything that you can jot things down. I'm also going to ask you to talk, so if you've got someone in the room with you, brilliant. If not, talk to a teddy or just talk back to me on the screen. But talking is really important to try and get your thinking together and explain your reasoning. Let's get started. Before we begin today's learning, we need to recap what we know already, what we've learned from our previous sessions in fractions. So looking at the screen, what can you see? I want you to try and think of some key words that we know to describe a fraction and this fraction in particular. So pause the video and have a go. OK, welcome back. What did you see? Could you name the shape? It's a rectangle. Were you able to see two equal parts? Fractions are all about the whole and the equal parts. So our rectangle is the whole and the whole has been divided into two equal parts. Can you see one of those parts has been shaded? Now can you think how you would write that one of those two parts has been shaded? Have a go, pause the video. OK, let's see how I would write that fraction. So we start with our rectangle. Our rectangle is our whole. And we need to see how many equal parts our whole is divided into. So to remind us that we divide our whole into equal parts, we start with the division bar. Then we look at how many equal parts. Our whole has been divided into two equal parts, so the two goes on the bottom. Can you remember the special name for the bottom number? Yes, it's the denominator. Then I look at how many equal parts. Here I have shaded one equal part, so the one goes on the top. And can you remember the name for the top number? Yes, it's the numerator. This fraction has a special name. Altogether, we say it's a half. Did you remember that? One half shows that I have one out of two equal parts. Can you name this shape? That's right, it's a triangle. And how many equal parts has it been split into? Well done, four equal parts. I've shaded one of those equal parts. Can you pause the video and show me how you would write that fraction? OK, let me go through it with you. Like we've always done, we start by saying the whole has been divided into. That's where we use our division bar. Then we need to count how many equal parts. Here, my whole has been divided into four equal parts. So the denominator, four, on the bottom of our fraction. And how many did I shade? One part has been shaded. So one, my numerator at the top. Do you know the name of this fraction? Yes, it's a quarter. Well done. Now your turn. True or false? One quarter has been shaded. Pause the video and jot down on your page whether it's true or false. And if it's true, why? If it's false, can you explain why? Pause the video. OK, did you have a go? Now remember what we know already. The whole has been divided into... Is there four equal parts? No, there's only three equal parts. 
so the denominator would need to be a three. In this fraction, that's a third, and I had shown a quarter, one over four. So that was wrong. It needed to be one over three for three equal parts. Well done. Okay, can you name this shape? And can you tell me how many equal parts my whole has been divided into? Tell me. Okay, well done. It's a hexagon. And my hexagon has been split up into six equal parts. If I shade one of those equal parts, have a go on your page. See if you can write down how to represent one of my equal parts. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, did your fraction look like mine? My whole has been divided into six equal parts and I've got one of them. It's one sixth. Now, if this is one sixth, that's our previous learning. So today's lesson is moving you on one small step. Instead of looking at one part, I want to look at many parts. How could I show four one sixths? At the minute I've got one of them, I want four of them. Pause the video and see if you can visualize what four one sixths would look like. Okay, let's have a look at these together. I've got one sixth already on my screen. Now look, here's another one sixth. And here's another one sixth. And here's another one sixth. Can you count four of them? Let's look at how we'd say them. This is one sixth. And together I now have two one sixths. And together I now have three one sixths. And all together I have four one sixths. So that's how four one sixths would look. Did your page look like that or your visualization when you first did it? Okay, here's my hexagon again. We're going to go through this one more time. This time, moving our learning on again to see another way how we could describe these one six. So here's my stem sentence. I'm going to use this for each of the parts. I have m mm, one six. I have m mm, six. So this is what we've been used to. This is one one six. We know that's one six. But look when I have more than one part. How many one sixth have I got now? Tell me. Yes, I've got two one sixths. So I can now say that as two sixths. They both are equal. They're both the same. It's two ways of saying that same fraction. So two one sixths is equal to saying two sixths. And it's really important that you understand both of those ways. We're used to looking at one sixth. And if I put a one sixth and a one sixth together, I have two one sixths. And I can also call it two sixths. Now look at this. As I go round my hexagon, I've filled in another one sixth. Count how many I've got now. Tell me, yes, I've got three one six. So I now know I can say that as three six. Say that stem sentence with me. I have three one six. I have three six. Now look at how I've written that as well. Three one six equals three six. It's two ways of saying the same thing. Now look what's happened. I've added another one sixth. How many have I got all together now? Tell me. Yes, 
I've got four one six. So I now say I have four six. Four one six is equal to four six. Guess where I'm going to go now? Did you guess? How many equal parts have been shaded? Tell me. Five. I have five one six. I have five six. And we can write it five one six equals five six. I've filled in all of my hexagon. How many sixths have I got now? Well done. I've got six one six or six six. Now look at this shape. Can you see five equal parts? Count them if you're not sure. I want you to show me three fifths. Can you visualize how it would be shaded? Or can you write down what it would look like? Pause the video and have a go. Okay, let me show you on my screen these three fifths. I've got one, one fifth, two, one fifths, three, one fifths, three fifths. They can be shaded in any order. I just chose these ones, but you could have done the top section and the middle section. That's fine. Let me write the names as well, because you may have written the names on your paper. This is one fifth, and I write one fifth. There's another one fifth. So now together I have two one fifths or two fifths. Remember, they mean the same. And there's my last one fifth. So all together I have three one fifths and I can describe that as three fifths. OK, now tell me what you can see on the screen. Speak up. <laughs> Here's my question. How many one six have been shaded? Can you see the six equal parts making up my whole hexagon? And I've shaded some of them. How would you show how many have been shaded? Can you write the words? Pause the video and jot it down. OK, let me show you. So I've counted five equal parts shaded and I know that is five one six. I can also describe that as five six. So I know that five one six is equal to five six. OK, true or false? False. I have shaded two quarters. Have a think. I want you to pause the video and tell me if it's true, why? If it's false, why? Okay, have you had a try? Two quarters shaded. If it's two quarters, I need to have four equal parts all together. One, two, three, four. That would be my denominator. And two of them shaded, two would be my numerator. I know that's correct because two quarters is the same as two one quarters. I can see two one quarters. It was true. OK, we've come to the end of our video for today, end of our lesson. But before I leave you, I'm giving you a practice activity. You have two tasks today. So first of all, look at this shape. I've picked an interesting shape that if you've been following these lessons regularly, you will have seen this before. So have a careful think. My first question's there to help you. Name one of the parts in this picture. My second question, how many parts have been shaded? 
Then my next activity, out of this shape, can you shade four twelfths? I will be with you in the next lesson. So remember to have a copy of this activity with you, whether you've jotted down your answers or whether you're just going to remember them. We'll go through them in the next lesson. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon.